Today, we'll be talking about saving for college and more specifically, the benefits and drawbacks of using a 529 education plan to save for that higher learning. We aim to present both sides and let you decide for yourself as whether it's saving for college through a 529 plan or a standard brokerage account, there are pros and cons to each route. First though, what is a 529 plan? A 529 is a special investment account that is designed with specific benefits when using the money for qualified educational expenses. So qualified educational expenses is a broad term that captures things like tuition, books, fees, and other related expenses. See IRS publication 970 for more on that. So those benefits can be immediate, like a state tax deduction for contributions depending on your state, or long-term, like the ability for the money to grow tax deferred and come out tax-free to use for education down the road. The plans also predominantly work through an age-based investment strategy, meaning the investments will be very aggressive early on as the child is youngest, and as they get older and closer to college, the investment allocation will slowly get more conservative. So let's do a quick calculation to first show the benefit of a 529 plan as opposed to a brokerage account. Let's say congratulations are in order because you just had your first child and a family friend gives you $5,000 to start saving for their college. You're grateful for the gesture and you wanna utilize the gift efficiently by setting up the right account for that money. You decide you'd like to have stock market exposure to grow the funds, so you explore opening a brokerage account. You contemplate taking the $5,000 and putting it in mutual funds that roughly track the age-based strategy of the 529 account. More aggressive the further the child is from needing the funds and more conservative the closer they are. For this exercise, let's assume an average rate of return of 8% annually, and thus the $5,000 surges to a whopping $19,980 in 18 years. You would then take the funds out to use for qualified education, but the only problem is almost $15,000 would be a gain and would be taxable at long-term capital gains rates, meaning you'd owe just over $2,200 in taxes when you sell and net just under $18,000. You also do some research and explore instead using a 529 plan to get market exposure and tax protection. First, you'd receive a tax deduction on contributions if you live in one of the 30 plus states that allows for it. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. For this exercise, it's important to use an apples to apples comparison for investment returns. So let's assume the same 8% annual return. This means that $5,000 grows to the same 19,980 and all of it comes out completely tax-free as long as the funds are used for qualified education expenses. A net of 19,980 plus whatever benefit you would have received with the tax deduction early on. So the benefit in this example is clear. With the 529 plan saving you over $2,200 in taxes, all of which could be used to help fund your child's higher education. And of course, the benefit can be compounded with consistent contributions to build up the gains in the account. But it's important to point out that this example considers an apples to apples identical rate of return. So that presents a question. What if the earnings aren't apples to apples? What if you could earn more in the brokerage account than in the 529 plan? And how could you potentially do that? Well, things to research and consider when comparing the 529 to the brokerage account include underlying fees and expenses, as well as the investment options beyond the age-based strategies. In order for the calculation to be truly a benefit in the example we just touched on, you'd actually need to achieve the same growth percentage in the 529 than outside of it. If not, and the earnings are even 1% lower annually, then the tax savings may not be as much as the difference in growth in the brokerage account after paying the taxes. So how can this be done? Well, in theory, if you had increased investment options in the brokerage account by having the ability to purchase no load funds, for example, exchange traded funds or individual securities, which could also potentially reduce fees, you could net a better return with those investments. Let's do some math to illustrate this. If the $5,000 instead grew at 9% return annually versus the 8% of the 529 account, it would grow to 23,585. The cost basis, of course, 
course would be $5,000, which leaves a gain of $18,585. After paying capital gains taxes of roughly $2,800 on that amount, you'd be left with a net net of $20,797 in the brokerage account as compared to the $19,980 net from the 529 plan. So naturally, all these numbers are hypothetical, but this illustrates the power of compound interest and time and how even a small increase in return over many years can have a big impact on the end result. Of course, this same concept happens in reverse if the brokerage account underperforms the 529. So the suggestion certainly isn't to be more aggressive in the brokerage account unless you want to, but rather to be diligent in comparing investment options and underlying fees when deciding between the two. Clearly, there are tax efficiencies to the 529 plan, but that may not necessarily mean you'll have more money for college at the end of the day. One final issue we see on occasion is when things don't go as anticipated and the child doesn't end up needing or using the funds for college education. In this video, we've outlined ways to unwind a 529 to include options to get the funds out or use them in other ways in those situations while avoiding taxes and penalties. Among them is a new option that allows for those education funds to actually instead be used for retirement. My name is Sean Hockley. Thanks for watching.